This is a question that was asked from one of our ever-expanding friends on Jordan Shanks, but not expanding as fast as I'd like it to. Anyway, <laughs> but I'm actually going to mention who this person is purely because they've got a funny name. This is how you get cred. You come up with a dumb name. This guy here called Mufflux. <laughs> Why you got a self-help channel? You're as enlightened as they get. No, he's got two questions. You only get one, Mufflux. I wouldn't have expected you to be a troublemaker. One, how does one who has realized they have been developmentally crippled slash shielded and feels like they've missed out on developmental experiences have or satisfy the lack of said experiences without looking like an extremely immature mid-twenties man child? Uh, the, okay, then he goes to another question, but then he signs it off with, and again, this is why you deserve a special visiting. There's your question, you slut. <laughs> First off, I don't think that you have missed out on any developmental experiences or had lack of said experiences. But I think what you're talking about is this idea that everyone has, which is perfectly exemplified by 4chan. 4chan, have they ever done anything fucked up? But they came up with the greatest meme of all time, which is the 30-year-old boomer meme. I think we could all relate to that. Right? Uh, <laughs> Monster. But I think that it's really hitting on something. And that is Ash Fellows. <laughs> that, that is that if you are one of these people who's kind of perpetually in that man-child stasis. And I think most of our generation is because we've just been too mollycoddled. But I think what you're talking about when you say most people's problems is that they haven't developed a skill. It seems like, Muff Flux, what you're saying from this is that you have had not enough life experiences and as a result you feel developmentally crippled. Well, you could do what I did and just read a bunch of books about development and then just academically figure it out instead of just getting your head beaten in a few times. But this is something that everybody needs to get into their head when they're talking about this. Boomer is a state of man. But there's something that you need to know, which is that every single person always has this excuse filter in their mind, depending on what part of stage of life they're in there, that they're in, which is that I'm too old or I'm too young to do whatever. So it doesn't matter what you're talking about in this context. Let's just make it extremely general because let's be honest, <laughs> it's the second time I read that question and I don't think I understand it. But I'm making a video about it anyway. Pretty much just to cash in on the boomer beam. Nine months too late. How boomer is that? But everybody always has this thing of I'm too old or I'm too young. You know what the truth of the matter is? That is all in your head. Like most of these things in life, most of the way that you see the world is purely as a result of either your parents or your peers telling you that that's the way the world is. It actually is not. There's a million examples. Look at Hugh Hefner. He was having sex with 20-year-olds at 90. Yeah. <laughs> That's not fucked. <laughs> but you can do whatever you want in life in the free world, essentially. Right? You can even kill people. Yeah, these are turning into 8chan now. <laughs> it's like... it's But there's that... Uh, Obviously, just for the dumb asses in there, yeah, don't go, I'm not saying you should navigate and kill people. All right, now, moving on to the vast majority of normal human beings. Let's say, for instance, that you wanted to start up a business. Most people always, when they do this, there's a few people that always do, just don't think in those terms. And those are the people that left in year 10 and now they've started up a market, now they own a jewelry store because they have much more experience in that field than everybody else who was going to university who was figuring out how to make jewellery, which actually is a tape thing. But do you see what I'm getting at? Because I kind of don't really at the moment. I'm saying that if you are one of these people that is constantly using these I'm to whatever, really assess that. Why do you think that? Give yourself reasons for it. Actually write that down. So for this guy, when he's saying that he feels like he's developmentally crippled and that if he went out and did these developmental things, and I think he's hitting on the same thing that I do as well, which is that 
I feel like in my 20s, I spend way too much time focusing on succeeding in my field and not enough time getting drunk with my friends and waking up just being like, was I raped last night? I, I actually do regret doing that. But you know what I'm doing to remedy that now? And this is what's even more baller about it is now that I'm older and now that I have more money than my friends, I can go on really ex elaborate, cool trips overseas and I can bring my friends with them and I can pay for their ticket if I wanted to, but I'm too much of a cheapskate to do that. But I could. And now as a result of that, I can basically do all of those developmental experiences, but be baller about it as well. So it's on both ends, it's always the best thing to be developing a skill. Because when you develop a skill, you can use that and take a bit of a break. You can't take obviously too much of a break. You have to always be sharpening that saw. But you can take a break and celebrate the fact that you actually have sharpened your saw when the vast majority of the population doesn't. And all they have is developmental experiences. Really when they're talking about developmental experiences most of the time, what they're talking about is funny memories in their mind. That's all I really miss about it. When I think about development, because I spent so much time reading self-development, I feel that I'm far more self-developed than the average person that has spent most of their time developing by going to a bunch of hipster parties and asking for tally-ho cigarettes and not having enough money to get their own fucking tally-ho cigarettes. So, that is really how you look at it. If you are one of these people that feels like your life isn't rich enough, and I'm guessing from this, from this guy's question that he is actually one of those people that spend a lot of time developing his skill. He is now in the position to do that, but he's got this thing blocking him in his head that, no, I'm a little bit too old to do that now. Hogwash. Haven't you ever seen that movie with all those aging actors in it whose name escapes me out? Road Hogs or whatever the fuck it is. Hollywood's real life. Get it through your head. Any point in your life, unless you're really bogged down in that mortgage raising kids scenario and you don't have enough money, usually again as a result of not developing a skill unique enough to attract that money, and that's on you. That's the other thing about all of these things. When I'm talking about friendly joys, I'm talking about society in general because I understand that most people are not going to click on self-help and apply self-help principles. Uh, they're just basically just going to ward, th ward through life and I still want those people to have a good life. But you, if you're watching this, you do not have an excuse to not be better than the average. Because if you are watching self-development, you're already in the top 10% of society. The top 10% of society sees the value in self-development. But when it comes to these things of like, uh, have I missed out on this? Have I missed out on that? You have, to, you have to also know the sobering realization that in life, everything is a trade-off. And so if you're doing one thing, you've eliminated every other possibility. The problem is the other people that never commit themselves to anything. That is a worse place to be in. So know that if you have that problem, that is a good problem to have. But life is always filled with problems. No matter what you choose, you're always going to have problems. It's just a thing of getting more stylish, better problems. So for instance, not developing a skill. What does that lead to? Usually it leads to a lot of drug consumption and poverty. That is going to shorten your life. That's a problem. The problem with developing a skill is now you don't have any fun anymore. Oh no. So there's got to be a little bit of a balance there and that's, a, that's for everybody to figure out in their own life what that balance is. But I would argue that if you're one of those people that is sitting there going, oh, I wasted my 20s. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Trust me, I relate. But, <sighs> Lord, how I relate. Also, my lips are dry. <laughs> I get two problems. See, life is never ending problems. I have to go get Vaseline. I want you to think about it from that perspective though, is that first of all, you should be patting yourself on the back for that. The second thing is when you have any of these blocks in your head, I want you to think about it from this angle. Are you feeling sorry for yourself at the moment? If you are feeling sorry for yourself, I want you to write down why. This is one of the best things that will ever, it is better than any Psychologist that you could ever pay for, fact. <laughs> There's such a, just completely wiping off an entire discipline at university. It's all shit. Why? Because I've read like a little bit of a book and it was all stats and I was like, what the fuck? Is this maths or psychology? But I honestly think that one of the best investments you can ever make is a dollar exercise book from Officeworks and then buy a 10 cent pen. You can still get those anymore, huh? Is this, is this 1972? But... 
You're getting what I'm getting at. Under five dollars, you can have something that will keep you way more mentally healthy than the average person, which is that every time you're feeling sorry for yourself, write it down. Then write down why you feel sorry for yourself, and then write down what the solution is. Because you know what it is. You know what the solution is. But the problem is that a lot of people just will these problems around in their head. They just keep swishing around going, oh God, but it's kind of like Pokemon. Once you write down the problem, you've identified it. You've given it some kind of solid, physical, real world implementation. So you can see that it's actually really easy to solve. When it just keeps washing around in your head, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then that's when you start hypnotizing yourself because then your brain just starts coming up with excuses for why it's feeling that problem. And the excuse is always something external, such as the fact that I'm too old or I'm too young. That is not your fault, is it? That's biology's fault. And so you have to, as a result of that, I mean, sorry, and as a result of that, you have the cheap path out. You don't get to ever look at that and just go like, oh, there's something that I can solve in that situation. You just get to sit there and just be like, well, too old for that. Anyway, I'm just going to continue working until I'm dead. That's a, yeah, what a good life plan. You're not changing anything from your life's path because you're externalizing problems. But the thing is, and this is one of the main things of self-help, is that if you internalize your problems, if you take ownership of your problems, instantly you found that there is a solution to that because it's your issue. And as a result, you have to deal with it. Are you too old to have all of these crazy adventures? No. In fact, I would argue it's way funnier to have stupid jackass adventures when you're 30. There was an underlying current of hilarity in the third jackass in the sense that it kind of was that skit from Jackass 1 when they were 90 year olds still doing stupid shit. And they looked way sadder about it going, why did we agree to this? Oh God, I'm so embarrassed. I'm a freak. It was funnier because they were too old to be doing that shit. It's kind of the same with Hamish and Andy. When you listen to their stuff now, everyone goes, Oh, it's not as good as when I was 12. Yeah, that's because you don't have a wonder, childlike imagination anymore. So when you listen to people having fun and having games, you're just like, I didn't work, I can not be at work, I can start a garden. But... If you actually listen to it from fresh ears, it is even funnier now that Hamish and Andy are basically 40. <laughs> it's way better listening to them still acting like 12 year olds. There's no excuse that you shouldn't be doing anything in life in those things of like, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm not pretty enough, blah, 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 blah. That is all externalizing a problem. You can take ownership of it. And the best way to do that is to write it down because instantly you started specifying what you're actually upset about. And as soon as you have specified what you're upset about, the problem becomes way smaller. And then when it becomes way smaller, it becomes easier to deal with. And here's the best part. It becomes fun dealing with it. It is way better working on a problem. You feel better working on a problem than you do playing any of your PlayStation 4s or 7s or whatever you're up to these days. I'm going to get one of those crap PlayStation 1s that everyone's complaining about, by the way. <laughs> that's, 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 you say you don't be a man-child, and I am definitely not a 30-year-old boomer. God, I still wish I had that monster drink that I was drinking yesterday. Just went, <laughs> yes, re-man. All right, so that's my take-home for you today. What excuse are you using? Clearly, just by this man's language, you can tell that he is using the excuse of I'm too old. He's feeling like he's missing out. Two of those things can be instantly solved. He could instantly solve the problem. He could do it. He just needs to reframe it in his head. He just needs to reframe it in his head that it is socially acceptable for him to do it. And here's the trick about social, uh, social acceptability. Billy Madison did it best when he just did that. You are not cool unless you pee your pants. That actually is how society works. It doesn't matter if you're working with kids or adults. It's pretty much exactly the same thing. If you are more certain than the average person, you become what is socially acceptable. End of story. All right. See you next week. Give me your questions. Give me your likes. Get